Okay, so let's talk about trusts. Just to give you first a background of what a trust is. A trust is a way of splitting beneficial ownership and legal title of an asset. So let's say that uh, I've got a car. If I'm the owner of the car, uh, then I have both the legal title, it's my car, I have to pay for the maintenance, I have to put the gas in it, and I have the beneficial ownership. I get to drive the car, right? Instead, I could set up a trust and I could say, my partner Eric is now my trustee. He's now got legal title to the car. He's got to pay the taxes, put the gas in it, make sure it's waxed every week, and that I can, it's all ready to go, right? And I'm still the beneficiary. I could be the beneficiary. I get to drive the car. Sounds like fun, right? Um, but basically, the idea of the trust is you can separate these roles of legal title and beneficial ownership. And uh, that allows somebody else to oversee assets on behalf of a different person. So there's several kinds of trusts. The testamentary trust we'll talk about first, which is very applicable to folks with young children, uh, and then revocable or living trust, and then I'll just barely touch on uh, asset protection trusts and life insurance trusts so we don't run out of time here. So a testamentary trust is a trust that's created by your will, and it doesn't avoid probate. You still have to go through this court process to get everything to the beneficiaries, but basically it says, if I die, uh, and my spouse has already died, and I've got kids, and the kids are under the age of 25, then instead of just giving the money to the kid, who's going to spend it all when they turn 18 in Las Vegas, set up this new trust and hold the money in trust for Junior until Junior finishes college or turns 25 or half at 25 and half at 30 or whatever rules you want, right? A lot of flexibility. So it allows you to control the money after your life. And again, you get to pick a trustee. could be the guardian you've picked. And Aunt Susie's going to take care of the kids and is the, the trustee for them. Or it could be somebody else, the attorney or my bank is going to be the trustee and manage the money and the finances and pay for things on behalf of Junior. But it gives you this control. And so it really, it's a contingency plan uh, for young married couples. You write the two wills for the husband and wife, and it says if one spouse dies, the second spouse gets everything, but if both spouses die or on the death of the second spouse, if the kids are still young, create this new trust for them, right? So you still have to go through that court process, but it ensures that there's some way to manage the money for the kids. So you can say the trustee must liquidate everything to cash, or you can say the trustee has the discretion to sell, distribute in kind, so forth, right? And I typically want to give the trustee as much discretion as possible because it's hard to anticipate. You know, you might die and the real estate market's down, and it'd be better for the trustee to rent the house out for a few years, even if your kids are living with Aunt Susie, and then sell it when the real estate market's up, than to have to liquidate it immediately, right? And so, again, you got a lot of flexibility. If you want to say this has to go here and this has to get sold or put everything in cash, most trustees will eventually end up with things in cash just because it's easier to manage. You can have an investment manager deal with the portfolio, but how long it takes to get there and the goals. You know, if you had a 19-year-old kid who's living at home and going to college, you might want to keep the house so they can live in it, right? And so, you know, giving the trustee the discretion to make those decisions makes a lot of sense. The only real rule is called the rule against perpetuities. This is old English rule that try to keep people from holding money in trust forever, right? Uh, and so Virginia still honors the rule against perpetuity. So you have to keep the money in trust no longer than the life of a person in being plus 21 years. Basically, pick the youngest person you know and add 21 years to that, and that's the longest. So you could have all the money in trust for the entire time your kids are alive and then another 21 years, right? Or if you already have grandkids, whatever. So I've got people that come in and they say, oh, my kids are smart. They can have all the money when they're 18 or 20 or whatever the case might be, or 22 when they finish college. And I've got other people that come in like, Timmy is a real handful, right? If you've got little kids, I will always recommend at least doing the testamentary trust. And I'll explain the revocable trust next and kind of the benefits of that. Uh, but I don't know why you wouldn't want to do this because I wouldn't want my kids to have the money when I was eight, when they were 18, right? Uh, so having some control over that makes sense. And even before they're 18, I like to have some specific rules of what the trustee can spend the money on. Because if you just leave it to a, the custodian, Aunt Susie's now got the money in the kids and there's no list of things that she's supposed to spend money on, she decides, well, we'll take the whole family to Disney World for the week, including all of her three kids, and then, well, we'll pay for that out of this account. And, you know, there's no oversight or no, no rules there. So even if you want your kid to have the money at 18, it's good to have rules. Most people want to have their kid grow up, be a little more mature, be able to manage the money before they have access to the money themselves, right? Okay.